Welcome to the third video in my series on uh, collecting wild yeast uh, as well as other wild organisms. In this video I'm going to talk a little bit about identifying what you've recovered. So if you're not at this point yet please watch the first two videos in this series to get a better idea of what we're talking about. Now the goal of today's video isn't necessarily to show you how to identify uh, down to the species what we have on our plates. In fact that's not possible just by looking at the colonies on the plates. Really what my goal here is is to help you avoid things that are potentially dangerous or at least which are not necessarily things you would want to put in your beer to ensure that what colonies you're picking and testing are the most likely to be uh, of what you want. So this plate here shows um, some colonies recovered from a commercial bottle of Lambic. In this particular Lambic, I know for a fact that there is Pediococcus and Lactobacilli, which are both bacteria, as well as Saccharomyces and Britannomyces yeast. And yet, as you can see, looking at the colonies on this plate, they all look the same. So this is an excellent example of why we cannot simply tell what species are what based on the way they look on our plates, because at least among the ones we want, they all look the same. But that's also good news, because it means if we see things that look similar to these colonies, chances are they might be something that we're interested in. So the organisms we want tend to have one of two colors. The first color uh, you can see here, this is actually some yeast or bacteria that I've pulled off of those grapes uh, that you might have saw, seen in my previous videos. Uh, and these are what we would call an unpigmented colony. So there isn't color to it, it's just sort of a translucent uh, color. If this was grown on a media that had a dye in it, it would just be that color, that dye. The other color that we'll see in organisms we want are what are shown here. And I know they don't look hugely different, but these are actually white. So they've got a white coloration or a white pigment in them. So they're not translucent, they're not colorless, they're white. So either clear or white are typically things that we would want to use and we would look for. There are of course all sorts of other colors things can be, and these are the stuff we want to avoid. So here is an example uh, that the readers of my blog will likely recognize. Uh, this is a, a plate of wild yeast that I plated out just four days after capture, so far, far earlier than you would ever want to be pulling organisms out of one of these wild ferments. And what you'll notice is there's a lot of sort of pinky red colored colonies. These are a wild yeast called Rhodotiura, uh, which is actually a potential pathogen, so this is not something you would want to eat. The other colonies on this place are actually mostly Escheria coli, which is, again, another pathogen or potential pathogen that you wouldn't want to be using in your beer. So obviously these aren't things that we would want to collect or put, on our, uh, put in, our, in our beers. This is a different plate. Uh, this is one I deliberately set up just to give you an example of something else that doesn't really look very safe. Uh, and this is um, actually colonies of yeast, which are in white. And this is just plain old brewer's yeast, nothing fancy. And those golden colored um, colonies are a common uh, bacteria that a lot of us have in our noses and on our skin called Staphylococcus aureus. Now this is a normal part of the stuff that's on our skin, but it can also cause very serious infections, both food poisoning as well as actually lethal infections um, of our tissues, our lungs, that sort of thing. So this is also something, if you ever saw something golden on your plate, you would want to avoid it. So here's another example of uh, something that you might want to avoid. And there's actually two things here that kind of give away that there's something a little scary. The first thing, if you look here at the end of where I'm pointing, is this sort of filamentous, um, fuzzy looking growth. And if we go down here, you can see actually some more here in the corner. That's maybe a little more obvious. That's mold. That's something you want to avoid. Um, some molds are toxic. Uh, but all molds will make your beer taste like cardboard. So either case, in either case you want to avoid it. And the other thing that's maybe not quite as obvious here in the video, but which I can see quite clearly, is these colonies here that are sort of sitting on top of the mold. Where's my pen? There and there are what we would call uh, somewhat mucoid. And what that means is it sort of looks like they've got a layer of snot on top of them. And again, mucoidy things uh, are not the sort of stuff you want to be having in your beer. Uh, they're not necessarily going to be dangerous, but they certainly are not going to taste good. So the major thing we're going to look for when we're trying to select um, organisms to keep is obviously their color. We're looking for those white ones or those colorless ones uh, as the organisms we want to pick. 
But there are a few other things we can look at that will help us pick out potentially dangerous things, or at least things that are going to produce a bad beer. So we typically want to look for colonies that are circular in shape. What that means is if you're looking at them top down, they're going to look like a disc. Which you would want to avoid are things that deviate from that. So that could be, um, for example, uh, cases where instead of having one single round colony, you have a bunch of small colonies that sort of form into a bigger one. Those, that's typically not a good sign. Anything that looks um, filamentous or webby, uh, like those fungal colonies I just showed you, you want to avoid. Really anything that's sort of irregularly shaped, uh, even if they're sort of oval or, or streak-like colonies in place around ones, are things that you would want to avoid. Another thing that's worth looking at is actually at the, the actual edges of the colony. Typically, the organisms we're looking for are going to have very smooth and even, or what we would call an entire border. So it's just basically the, the whole margin is the same the whole way around. It's nice and smooth and continuous. You might see some that are a little bit bumpy. So it's still a round colony, but the edges may be a little wiggly. That's okay as well. Um, but if you start to deviate much from a little bit of wiggle, if you're getting into stuff that's got fuzzy edges or really lumpy edges, or that looks like a series of sort of colonies growing on top of each other with sort of the biggest one on the bottom and smaller ones growing up. Those are things you would want to avoid. Now, it doesn't help us much, but there is one last thing that's worth talking about, and that is sort of the, the cross-sectional shape of the colony. Now, it turns out this isn't very useful for finding good things versus bad things. Yeast can be flat or raised or uh, concave or they can have this uh, umbuate form. That's all normal within the kind of organisms we want to collect. Um, but it's worth logging uh, and taking a note of if you're sort of collecting and characterizing colonies because it might help you figure out what you have or at least if you were to come across it again it might give you a better idea of what the characteristics are of that thing on your plate without having to go through all the rest of the tests. So I know this was a pretty short video. Obviously there's a lot more that we can do with these things, um, but at this point you at least know enough to avoid the really dangerous stuff, and you can now start picking colonies and you know fermenting them up in little tubes of wort or whatever it is that you want to do uh, to then test them to see what their characteristics are. Now in future videos I will go into a little more in-depth analysis of what different uh, species are. So obviously we can do more than simply grow them up and see how they taste, although ultimately that's obviously what we want to do. Um, but in future videos we will cover a little bit more of the, the technical analysis, but still in a way that you can do at home.